All right, thank you everyone for being here. So we're ready to start our April meeting. Everyone can hear Chris in the room here? Okay. Yeah. And um, just for panel members, if you're online, you know, just say things out loud for the record, you know, not using the chat feature. Uh, we have minutes um, also being taken by city staff. Also want to acknowledge the Arapaho Ute and Cheyenne tribes, the traditional custodians on the land on which the Pennsylvania Panel of Boulder and the Boulder Police Department operate and pay our respects to their elders past and present. Uh, welcome the public and any press to the meeting I'm from Nuria and also welcome our panel members for being here. Thanks for setting up and everything, Selena. And just want to acknowledge this week and anything that may have been challenging, um, especially like your power going out and losing everything in your fridge or, you know, stuff like that. Uh, if there's members of the public, please use a Q&A feature. We will answer some brief questions, but if you have something more substantial, um, we have the public comment section towards the end of the meeting. If you want to submit complaints or contact the panel outside of this meeting, our web address is Boulder, Colorado, bouldercolorado.gov slash services slash police oversight. And our panel email is police oversight panel, all one word, at bouldercolorado.gov. And our meetings are available and they are posted to the website. And so we're just going to start with our agenda. And give me a second to bring that up. And so we're going to start off with um, an introduction to Nuria and a conversation with her. Well, thanks. Um, and there's some new faces in the room that I don't know. And so I'm Nuria Rivera Vandermeid. I'm the city manager. Um, so thanks for having me and for those new faces. Welcome. And so excited, right, um, to have you all be part of the panel. Uh, I truly believe that you are integral to um, the city. I believe strongly in oversight. I think it's really important. Um, not that I don't believe um, in our police and don't have faith in police, but I also believe in accountability. I believe in oversight. I believe that the panel has a function and a critical function at that. And so I just thank you because you give a lot of your time and energy. And I also will say this, that I know well that you all will be seeing, if have been and will see videos that are hard, right? You, you are privy um, to circumstances that are difficult. And I hope that you take care of yourselves. I hope that you think about that when you're um, watching um, and doing case reviews, and that if there's anything that the city can do to continue to support you and your very critical work that you let us know, because I know that it is wearing um, and that um, that we all bring trauma to the table um, and that that is something that compounds over time. And so please let us know um, how we can support you in the really critical work that you do. I also know that you're curious, right? So we have an interim police chief. Um, and the question that I get more often than not is what is the timetable? And I just got that today, actually. And so I wrote it down because I want to make sure that I get it right. Um, I know that you all are um, like other folks wanting to know what that looks like and know that we will be involving you in that process. Um, our recruiter has been updating that job description. Um, we are going to actually prepare a survey to go out. We're going to send it to critical stakeholders. You are all are part of those critical stakeholders. We're also going to be soliciting input from other community organizations as well, um, faith leaders in our community, um, critical um, stakeholders that police interact with across the community, um, really soliciting input on candidate desired characteristics. Um, we're going to hopefully complete that this month and send that out. 
With that, we're going to finalize the recruitment brochure and get a recruitment website live. Recruitment website is not something we do for every position. We want to be really transparent about this particular recruitment. It is unlike any other recruitment, right? We want people to know where we are at every stage of this recruitment. It is important as we move it forward. So we hope to get that um, by the end of the month as well. So you will see progress as we move forward because is I know that people are very interested in what we're doing um, with the selection of our next police chief. We're hoping to post the position by early May. Um, usually a lot of positions are posted for two weeks. We will do that for three weeks. Um, we want to make sure that we're, because we're doing a national search, that we give people opportunity to be able to get their applications together to send that forward. Um, we have an external recruiter. We are not doing that with our internal HR. Raf Tellis uh, is our recruiter who will be doing that for us. They just finished our recruitment with our municipal judge that was announced just last week, I believe. Um, so we will be using that national recruiter to do our that work. Um, so in that process between when that posting goes out um, and in those three weeks, they're going to be finishing and helping to develop the next stage, that interview process, the community meetings, um, the panel. We will have a series of different panels um, comprised of different stakeholders. So they're going to be getting that together. Um, you all will be part of that. So not only will you get the survey, you will also be part of those panels as we move forward, as will a variety of community stakeholders. Um, and then once those at the end of May, we hope to get those candidates in. HR and our recruiter will start the initial review of candidates just for the minimum quals um, to make sure that anybody who doesn't meet those are excluded from the get-go. Um, and by then, hopefully, we will have a better process and we'll know a little bit more about timeline. I don't know when somebody asked me, I think um, Annette James from the NAACP just asked me and I sent her similar information because she had emailed me. She asked me when the completion date is. I really won't know that because it takes a while to like get calendars, right? When we finally select the panels uh, and the different um, folks that are going to do that and to do the community interviews, like we've got to slate, we've got to figure out everybody's calendar right, and figure out when people are available. So once we get that, um, we'll know a little bit more, but I expect that we will do that during the summer and we will um, hopefully have a chief in place by the summer. So that is what I know so far. All of that will be on the website, right? So we're excited about it. I, I think it's a really good opportunity. Um, we hope to get good candidates as we move forward and see what that looks like. It's also budget time, um, so I'll put in that out there, I, and particularly for your engagement subcommittee. Um, I will say that this is the moment to be thinking about um, the kinds of engagements you want to do during the year so that you can give that information um, to Sherry and she can put in that request. Um, those departmental requests are due to us. Um, I am forgetting the right time, but sometime in May, I think at the end of May or something like that. Um, so make sure that you're thinking about that now um, so she can build that into um, the budget so we can get that request in. I will share with you what I share with everyone is that it is a constrained year, Ms. Sherry, because <laughs> um, we don't have a lot of funding. Um, but the nice thing about um, the kind of communication. We, this is something that is that is important. Um, we want you to be able to do your function of going out and engaging community. I have a lot more flexibility with one-time dollars. Um, and so that's always something I can pull from. And so I wouldn't be too concerned about being able to do your engagement activities as we move forward. So just a, just a little okay. nod, wink, wink to you all mm -hmm. as we move forward, because one-time dollars I can always do. But just make sure to do that and make sure to get that in. And Selena, Make sure you keep after that. <laughs> yeah, I think I can't remember the exact date, but we'll we'll let you know and just know that we've got some of that. Yeah. Um. So that's those are the two critical elements I've got for you now. What do you want to know from me? So does this panel have a committed budget, or is it just? one-time dollars and what happens when those have time dollars? Well, I will say none of our advisory boards have committed budget. That's not how the city budgets advisory boards, but 
we put that into whatever department this panel happens to be live in CMO. And so perhaps there's more flexibility when you live in the city manager's office and um, other uh, other panels, um, but it will come under the line item that is um, the police monitor's budget. And so it comes in there and we, we plan for it accordingly. Um, but we have quite a few boards and commissions in our rubric and they all sort of line wherever the department uh, liaison is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know if new panel members maybe wanted to give a quick introduction. Also. I'm Luna. Luna. Uh, I'm Stephen Burnans. I'm a student at Europa. Um, and yeah, entering month two. Oh, nice to put a face to the because uh, I got to read your resumes and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. <laughs> and my name is Abigail. I am a law student at CU Boulder. Oh, cool. so that's to my resume and <laughs> recovering <laughs> lawyer myself. And so, <laughs> so yeah, I'm recovered. I'm recovered. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like I know you read my resume. And it's so I'm not going to tell you what I do because you already know. Uh, I do have another question. How extensive will this firm in terms of candidates look into candidates of color, regardless of their gender or whatever? Yeah. So are they yeah. pretty um, adept at that? I believe they are. I mean, I, I think it's, um, I'll say two things. One, we've, we've used Dreftel. I've, used, I've been here three years now, right? Um, I've used, uh, they were here when I got here, I've used them, uh, continued to use them, and I have been pleased about um, what we have seen. There have been some recruitments that I have not been pleased about, and we have sent them out again, because we have not seen diversity in our candidates. Um, and there are times when we have had some diverse candidates and times when we have not. I mean, that's just a reality. This, uh, you know, Sherry, with when we did the independent police monitor, the pool is smaller just because there aren't that many independent police monitors, right? This is not a profession that is large um, when we do that. There are other professions that are much larger, but that is something that is um, important to me as a person. Um, as we do that, we lean into our racial equity goals. Uh, our recruiter knows that. And in fact, um, when I first got the job description for the chief, there's a lot of red in my editing of that description because there was no very little racial equity in that initial description when I saw it. We have changed that substantially. They are now looking at it as well. Um, that is critical to me in any of my executive positions as we move forward. Um, and so we'll see what what comes from that recruitment. But we but I do think that I have been happy with the um, results of our engagement so far, even though I know that it is um, hard in a predominantly white community to attract good talent of color. I, I will say it gave me pause myself when I chose to come to Boulder, when I looked at the demographics of the city, it was the one thing that, that gave me some consideration on whether this would be a community that I would feel comfortable with. So I get it when other people are thinking the same thing. Knowing that, um, knowing that most likely, or you know, the chances are that we did have a white candidates. How do you measure the awareness there? Um, because we want to at least have allies and campuses in the city, um, and so um, and it seems to me that it's always complicated to do that because people have the vocabulary, but not necessarily. The actions behind that. So, um, are you really? navigating that? <laughs> I mean, I guess we'll, we'll get to that when we when we see some of their accomplishments. We do that with referrals. We'll talk to some of their cities. Mm -hmm. We'll do some reference check. I hope that some of the partners, and I hope that you all are some of those partners, will challenge them when you get to some of those questions. Right? Um, there's a look and feel as you get some of those questions. I'm not the only one that will be asking questions. Some of you will be on those um, interview panels, we hope, as we invite you to do that. There will be others. 
that do that as we look at what they highlight and choose to highlight in resumes. Um, we will um, we will have questions that solicit what some experiences and hopefully solicit examples of that. Um, our recruiter really does some of those um, calls, uh, some of their references and ask them about some of those examples. So we try to be as thorough as we can without obviously being able to be in their mind, right? right. And, and be able to get at that. But I hope that you know, when you have a village asking questions amongst us all that we can get to some of the truth behind it. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yep. Great. I appreciate it. Yes. I feel getting thrown out. Yeah. <laughs> well, yes. I know you have another meeting. I do. I do. Well, I thank you and I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your meeting. Yeah. It's so fun. <laughs> so, Bear, if you'd like to introduce yourself and we can talk about the bylaws. Hi everyone, Farrah Muscadin, um, consultant for the city of Boulder. Good to see you all. I'm really, really happy to be back and to work with you. I, I do have a soft spot for the panel in the city of Boulder, so I am very much happy to be back. And hopefully you all saw my um, email, um, introductory email about the bylaws um, and starting that process. Um, but fundamentally, um, you know, the, the bylaws is a product of, of the panel. It's going to um, specifically delineate how you conduct your business. So panel participation, input, feedback is going to be key um, because this is going to be a document that you're going to be living with. Um, different from the ordinance and how we worked on that, this is obviously a bit more nimble. So as we work through it and see changes are going to be made, it's going to be much easier to do that than obviously amending the ordinance. Um, and so I, I prepared a, sm a very short, very short um, slide deck that, but I can really just jump into the meat and potatoes of it um, to just be more efficient with our time, primarily because I really need feedback from um, the panel to ascertain kind of the direction that you would like to go with the update of the, of the um, bylaws. Would it be okay to start that now? Yes. Okay. Let me just make sure I can share my screen. While you're doing that, I send everyone the option that Sarah had discussed so we can see options one, two, and three um, that she's asking our feedback. Okay. Hold on one. Second. I'm just, I have it open, but for some reason I'm not seeing it. Um, Selena, would you mind just sharing it for me? Yeah, just give me one second here. Thank you. We both have it. No, you got it. Perfect. Thank you. We can go to slide three. So essentially, the bylaws need to be updated to be, you know, in compliance and consistent with the new ordinance. Um, we also want to ensure it's consistent with how the panel is operating. Um, and I'm pretty sure there's been some evolution of practices from year one to the present. Um, and then um, this has always been a topic of conversation. There were sections of the ordinance that were just incomplete that we might want to finalize. And then also we may come across in our conversations that there are sections of the bylaws that we just need to include and draft and put in there. So these are the primary three areas that we're gonna be looking towards um, with, the, with the bylaws update. The next slide, please. So essentially, um, this just uh, briefly um, goes into the options that I um, discussed in the email that I sent to the panel. Um, and essentially, given kind of what I know about the panel, I, I, I imagine we're going to probably come up with a combination of these options. Um, essentially, um, option one is, you know, I can do a review and do an update. Again, you see at the bottom, each option obviously will include feedback uh, drafts to the panel, feedback review before the panel makes a final vote on it. This is 100% you know, a collaborative process because this is 
essentially your document and what you will be utilizing pretty much at every meeting to conduct your business. Um, the second option is bringing together um, two panel members that would work with me directly that we would work to update the um, the bylaws. And then of course, again, coming to the, the panel with updates and period of review before a final vote. And then the last one, and obviously this is this this takes into consideration our restrictions with you know the Open Meetings Act is just having a standing weekly meeting. Um, I imagine more than two panel members will be present, so it'll be open to the public where we discuss um, the changes and go through the process of updating it and what needs to be what needs to be changed and and, and edited and um, areas that need to be consistent with the or with the ordinance. Um, I'm open, obviously, to other other um, options, but I, I wanted to pr uh, provide some perspective um, and something that the panel can work with. But again, given kind of how I've worked with the panel before, and I know I feel like we will end up with some kind of combination of all three options to get to the finish line. Um, next slide, please. And so essentially, I just put in some questions that I would like um, for the panel to consider. Um, if I, I don't know if you've had these conversations before, but if you had a timeline in mind in which in in uh, in which you wanted to see the bylaws be completed, uh, or or we can set a goal, um, areas of concern or improvement that you would like to see in the bylaws. Um, and essentially, you know, kind of how you would want to move forward with the update. And if you did want to work through, you know, a couple of panel members to do that, um, you know, either taking volunteers, how would you, you know, who would volunteer to participate so that we can, you know, kind of move forward and get the get the work going. So these answering these questions today would help move the ball forward. But obviously, if the panel um, needs more time to consider, you know, to consider and talk it through. I mean, I, I obviously will understand that, but I, I want to be very clear that um, this is going, this this needs to be collaborative um, and that we need to work together because this is fundamentally your document. I think this is the last slide, Selena. Yeah, it was there. Okay, thank you. There, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, in terms of timeline, what do you have like a bracket of the time it would take? Like, could you give us some guidance as to you, what you've seen before um, for bylaws? So it really depends on the level of participation and how, you know, the, how, so for example, in the three options that I gave you, like if I did the review, it would probably be kind of like a month turnaround, month or two, you know, turnaround. Um, I think that if you're looking at kind of option two with working with two, two panel members, that could be probably closer to a two month turnaround. I think when you're opening up and working more with community, that just takes, you know, more time. Um, but I think, for comparison purposes, this is a similar process to um, how we updated the ordinance. And I want to say we worked through the summer months with the ordinance. So I think we worked through all of June, July, and August, because I do remember that the work group was pretty adamant that we were going to be done by the end of August. Um, cause I'm, I'm almost positive. We didn't meet like the, the labor day. We met weekly for two hours, pretty much throughout the summer. Um, and so that, um, but there's flexibility obviously in working with the bylaws because the circumstances with the ordinance is different for an assortment of reasons. So if the panel wanted to take a little bit more time, we have more, you know what I mean? We have more time to do that. Um, if the panel wanted to do kind of more of a phased approach where we take sections and the panel can, uh, you know, approve it as we come up with the appropriate language, you could do that. Or the panel may say, you know what, no, we want a full final product, take however how much time you need and bring us, you know, a final um, draft, then, you know, we can do that too. So it really, it really depends on how you want to form it. 
um, and the participation is really kind of what the the, the, the timeline would um, would factor in and be you know a huge consideration for. Kind of curious to know what what everybody thinks, but maybe that's taking too much time. But right. Oh, we lost back. Oh no, there she is. Can we start with this? Might be an Aaron question, but are there any like what is our urgency, if at all? Are we like in a situation right now where there's such a big mismatch that there are legal or ethical or procedural concerns that we need to be like trying to take care of immediately? Or do we have some time to sort of relax and and handle this at whatever speed we'd like? I think you have some time. Uh, it seems like you're getting through your agendas and you're you're making things work as you go along. So it, it doesn't seem like you are in grave need and there's no legal requirement for the bylaw. So you're not in any sort of jeopardy by not having them right now. And obviously, I think it would make it easier for all of you to have them. Um, so so I would, you know, consider it a priority. Um, but I think you can take the time to do it well. And we're very fortunate to have Farah's assistance. Um, that alone, I think, will help expedite it. Thank you. And then I think the other question for me that comes up, it feels like the main kind of criteria will be how many people want to be involved and want to put time into reviewing. I feel like that number may be all of us, and it may be none of us, or maybe two. And I think that maybe gives us our answer. <laughs> Um, so I'd be curious to hear kind of a struggle. I know for me, I'm happy to, I'm happy to dig into language. <laughs> I bet you are much time, like doing procedure and like, I've already started thinking about like, okay, so we had an issue with the minutes last time. So like, how are we going to make sure like minutes get approved on time? Like, that should be in the bylaws. So I'm here to help out. <laughs> awesome. I'm not a bylaws person. <laughs> no, that's not my area of expertise. I think it's a, it's pretty critical that we go ahead and finalize the bylaws. And it's kind of like having a destination without a map. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, we want to be clear and we want to be able to operate consistently as a group, as a body. Uh, all headed in the same direction. <laughs> so yeah, uh, well, I don't think we have to crunch, crunch, rush, rush, but I think it should be a priority. We should set a timeline. Otherwise it can linger forever. If I could um, jump in here, one, one recipe that I felt like worked so well, particularly in the work group, is um, having a newer member and someone who had already been on the panel um, and for our work group, that was obviously Hadassah, who had been, you know, from the beginning, and then Soledad, who was, you know, very new. So if that's kind of the route that you want to take. Um, I think that's super helpful because um, definitely Hadassah helped with kind of the historical context of really kind of explaining to th us to things that weren't working, you know, with the panel. And then obviously Soledad brought in a completely new lens of what it what it means, you know, when you're kind of outside the the oversight bubble and implications and how to make it clearer. So I, I would recommend that recipe again, if at all possible. Um, for, to Marilyn's point, I have recommended that the bylaws be a standing item on the agenda so that at the very minimum, you're getting a monthly update of where we at. I think that helps provide some level of accountability that we're not you know, in eternity. Um, and and I mean, those of you who know me, I am very much a taskmaster, so I don't necessarily want to work on this um, forever. <laughs> um, and so I can assure you that um, we will have an end date and something um, for the panel to vote on. The difference is, you know, do you want something next month or do you want to do, you know, can we do something in 90 days, 120 days? You know what I mean? That's like really what, what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, if I can add something, I think for me, the urgency lies in that the vision and the 
extension of the new ordinance doesn't match what we have and the way that the bylaws are written. And I think that we need to align them yeah. as soon as possible because I, I can see how, I mean, we changed the ordinance because it was very much needed. Yeah. And, and we need to catch up with the, the processes to embrace the ordinance that we, we created last year. And I mean, we as a, as a body, uh, okay, I'm happy to be involved in the bylaws. Uh, kind of my, my jump too. Um, and also I think it's, it's healthy to, to think about, I think 90 days is reasonable. Mm -hmm. So to give us time to, if whatever system we're, we choose today doesn't work, we can change course and adapt. Um, and even if, if we change certain methods or, or processes for the bylaws, we're still on time. Um, and I agree, I, I, I mean, while I love to do this, I don't think I would love to do this for more than that. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't know, that's my, my two cents on that, so. You're here, you're here. <laughs> I would just also say for anyone thinking of doing this just to be able to balance your time with five case reviews you have to sign. Then we have nine cases tonight that could add to that plate. We have a retreat coming up. We also have a in-person training at the police station. So just make sure that, you know, if you're committing or thinking this, just being able to balance out all those commitments as well. I would, I would like to add that I think that the Case reviews are going to actually we're, are going to start coming back online um, after the sort of lag because of the moratorium. So probably a month or maybe two before we start really seeing the the case reviews needed needing to get scheduled for those ones where we've already selected. This may be a difficult question, but do you think it'll be like um, we have six to do, or will it be like slowly rolling into them? <laughs> Uh, it's hard to say. Yeah, yeah. Every case needs to go every before it comes to the panel. It goes through um, command channel at the police department. So some people turn things around more quickly, and other people gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But I like option two, if possible. Option, option one is also great. Option two. Oh, okay. Yeah. Vera, would we be looking at? like two hours weekly, is that kind of the plan for option two and or option three? <laughs> you muted. <laughs> we got the gist though. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was trying to um, keep you guys from listening to me blowing my nose. Um, but um, yeah, I do think um, definitely in the beginning, but I think once we get into our rhythm, we probably could go um, bi-weekly because I think um, um, I, I do think that this this could be a quicker, quicker process um, because we have we have a base that we're starting with. We have, you know, examples from the city. Um, we have, you know, examples, obviously, from other cities that I started reviewing. So we kind of have a frame. Um, but what's going to be most important is just ensuring that it encompasses how you are conducting business and how you want to conduct business. So that's that's really um the key where where we get when we get a good working draft where we're honestly going to need everybody to read it read it and give us feedback before we um, bring the final but um, yeah I do think particularly let's just say for the first four to six weeks we probably should meet weekly for a couple hours and last question then I'm going to be quiet but for the folks who are here for the last bylaws update is there public interest in the bylaws? Do we need to consider the public having access if they'd like it in option three? Or was that not for the we don't know the, for, for well for like the last, does anyone know? I, I'm curious if there's precedent for community members wanting transparency when we're creating bylaws for this panel or I've done it before in the past and it was uh it was a tedious, painful process of having someone very skilled who happened to be an English major guide us through every sentence by sentence translation, and then there would be comments and feedback. And so if you can shrink that to two people versus dragging everyone in, 
it will keep us on that sort of timeline that we mentioned. Um, the other okay. thing, can I just add another thing for transparency's sake? If you accept my recommendation of having this as a standing item on your agenda, that is one way to have a level of transparency because we will be talking about it openly at every meeting until you take your final vote. So that is a way to allow some you know, public participation and awareness. Can, can I follow up to what you were asking and push everyone <laughs> to raise their hand? Interest in participating. I mean, let's think that we don't have a limit of two people who will be interested in participating. Okay, great. That ends his interest. I don't know if I could commit to the two hours a week for the six weeks. That's why I'm like a half, but if there was an opportunity to be involved. So just to take um, take take Farah upon understanding how this panel works, I will propose <laughs> that maybe we do every other meeting, like one meeting to the other meeting open to everyone that wants to come in, open to the public. Then the next one. So, like, what I what I uh, I would like to do is like we we get one session of extreme concentration on work and moving forward, and then one where we're open to feedback. But it's open, but you all can join if you want to for an hour, for two, for however you want. And then the next one is closed, just the three of us, and then uh, so on and so forth every other week. And one of them should be one of these. Uh, meetings if we do once a month. Does that sound doable? Yeah. So I'm so adding one more monthly kind of working session that's open to the group. So if we meet one would be four times a month, we have one that is uh, the two panel members and Farah. The other one is open and public. The other one is closed. The other one should be our old panel meeting. The other one is closed. Um, yeah, I love that idea. So I will just say I already um, I had my caseload of cases to classify down to zero on the first of the month, and it, it will be eight by tomorrow. So what I don't expect for at least the next like two months or so cases like the amount of cases that I give the panel to vote on every month. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, it looks like it's going to be high. So I don't know that having the bylaws meeting be part of the public. I just don't know that we have that much capacity. To, to, do you mean to the old panel meeting? Yeah. Do one up, update, you mean? I mean, if it would be like an hour or so. And then... No, I think it would, would be probably just talking about what oh, we're okay. well, setting up or something like that. So we, we bring it to the old panel, old public. Oh, okay. If it's a 20-minute like update comment. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're going to have two opportunities in between to be meeting, so we can communicate, I guess. So the open meeting should be more streamlined, maybe? Can, we, can I say, oh, I'm sorry. I think Victor was talking. Just in the interest of time, because we do have other business, is some of these details we can finalize through email and that, that we have answers to some major portions of this. But can we vote on it? Do we have to vote on this? I think so. I think yeah. so. Yeah. I think you just come up with this. I I like the idea. The hybrid? I like the hybrid. Like okay. Farrah fair said knew that we were. <laughs> <laughs> So I think what I was going to just summarize what I think I heard Soledad describing is that we're kind of, again, merging some of the options <laughs> and we're going to alternate the, you know, kind of the two person work group from the panel with the public meeting. I'm going to create a calendar it's very similar to what I did for the work group. So we'll have the dates and the times on there. And then for the the public meeting on, you know, on the off week. It mm -hmm. will, if it falls aligned with the panel meeting, it'll be an update, which would be anywhere between five or 10 minutes on yes. where we are with the bylaws. And that will suffice for the alternate public meeting. So yes. essentially we're talking about one public meeting a month and then one public update at a panel meeting. And then there will be two um, can, panel uh, subcommittee meetings to discuss um, the bylaws. 
Is that, I just want to make sure I'm summarizing what you were suggesting, Soledad. I think so. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes, pretty much. We can work on this, but I think yes. So okay. we I got it. I'll summarize it and I will send out an email um on Friday to everybody just to make sure we're on the same page. Should we should we can you move to vote on that? I <laughs> move to vote on the hybrids. The hybrid <laughs> session. <laughs> you second. Yeah, second. <laughs> uh, so let's vote. Everyone in favor? Great. Uh, Chico? <laughs> yes, <okay. laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great. This is the hardest work. You know? All right, thank you so much for. Uh, Victor, don't kill me. Um, who are the two people? <laughs> I missed the other. I didn't see the hand of the oh. other person. Abigail and yeah. Soledad. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. A camera person here is you now distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. We good? Yes. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Per. Uh, so the next item on our meeting um, is going to also require a vote uh, to move to closed session for the sole purpose of discussing case reviews and for folks to ask questions as we talk about confidential material. I move to session. We got seconds. We got to. Oh, okay. Everyone in favor? Everyone in favor of going to a close. closed session? Yeah. Are you So thank you everyone for um, dealing with our, our first closed session that we've had in our public meetings in a while. We're gonna take a five minute file break and then we'll come back and resume. Thank you. So we have some cases that we need to vote on. And then we also have some cases from the previous meeting that we need to assign. So maybe we should vote on cases first and then just assign everything. Mm -hmm. So the first case is FM 2024-002. Uh, Officer one has uh, allegations of rule one violations, rule two violations, and also rule three violations. Compliance with rules, conformance with laws, and truthfulness. I will take a vote to see if we want to review this case. So just by a raise of hands. My hand is up. My up. Is that noted for the record? Okay, thank you. The next case, excuse me, M12024-011. Officer one has a rule one violation, a rule five violation, and a rule six violation. Compliance with rules, general orders, rule five, public authority and public trust, and rule six, use of force. Uh, by show of hands, who wants to review this case? Yeah. And then who doesn't want to review? It's noted for the record of. Yeah, I only got eight to. Uh, did someone abstain? Did you get a bill? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, it was them too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. 
The next one is M12024-012. Uh, Officer one has a rule four and a rule one violation. Respect for others and compliance with values and general orders. Who uh, is voting to review this case? And who doesn't want to review this case? Abstain. Abstain. Oh, again. I have one yes, three no. <laughs> four. Yeah. One yes is abstain. Oh. You guys want to repeat? Can we do it again? Yes. Yeah. So let's do it again. <laughs> zero, zero, 12. So who wants to review this case for yes? Okay. For no, not to review. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Well, three abstains. Okay. The next case, M12024 013. Uh, Officer one has a rule one, a rule five, and a rule six violation. Officer six has a rule six violation, or Officer three has a rule six violation. Uh, by show of hands, who wants to review this case? And votes for now. All right, the next one is M12024-014. Officer one has a rule one violation. Officer two has a rule one violation as well. Who wants to review this case? And votes for now. The next case, M12024-015. Officer one has a rule four and a rule two violation. I'm sorry, a rule four violation. Officer two also has a rule four violation. Uh, we vote to review this case. Votes for yes. Votes for no. Did you vote? Oh, you're muted. Abstaining. Okay. So we're at zero one six. So um, M one two zero two four dash zero one six. Officer one has a rule one violation. Uh, who votes to review this case? And votes for no. Thank you. The next one, M12024-017. Officer one has a rule one violation and a rule four violation. Votes for yes. Okay. And votes for no. And the last one, M12024-018, unknown officer with the rule one violation and officer one also with the rule one violation uh, votes for yes. And votes for no. So if we want to start with our oldest cases first and then work our way up, um, we need to fill a case that Hadassah was on, and that was M12023-034. We have Jason and Lizzie already volunteered for that case. Who would like to fill in the third slot? Bill?
it's it's been a while on this, so <laughs> I wish I had. Anyway, put me on that one. We just need one person for that case. Yep. So the I next already volunteered. You have go for two zero two three dash zero three four. The next one needs two people. So this is M12024-002. I volunteered on this case. So if anyone wants to shout at me for this one or join, I will help any new member for this one. I can volunteer for that one. Okay. And we need one more person. I will note that Jason and AB are not here, so we will plug them into cases as well. Victor, maybe, maybe maybe we can add AB here. Okay, so we can put AB on that case. Uh-huh. So on that side. The next three cases we need three volunteers for. So starting with M12024-005. That's not on the list. Already on the list last time. I'm looking at the spreadsheet. Oh, okay. Oh, I guess we voted more. Sorry. Yeah. Apologize. There's a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Volunteers for 005. We need three people. 005. Okay. That's one. Yeah. I can. Okay. Abigail. Okay. Okay. So that was cheaper. And maybe we can just fill in Jason for that last slot. Yeah. Thank you. So I want you. Yeah. Thank you. Is that was this for five? Yeah, I was five. I was also. I was thinking. The next case is M one two zero two four dot zero zero eight. That we need three people for. Mm -hmm. How long does it take us to have these cases go through review is completed? As soon as we can get them scheduled, so we don't in the next couple of months. So, 008, me, Milan, we need one more. And so now, there are eight, yeah. There's eight. Yeah, yeah, I'm reluctant to. Need one more person? Then? Yeah. No, so it um no, I didn't mean that. Oh, so it's like available. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 You can sign up to be on one of them. Okay, so the next one is M12024-009. And this is the last case from last month. So we have Milan as one. Soledad. Yeah. Yeah. And Abigail? Yeah. Or you can still. I mean, I slip, you can. Yeah. Okay. Put me down. Yeah. That's an alternate. Okay. Or, I mean, Madeline. Yeah. Madeline can do it. That's, <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, no. I, I'll join you. Yeah. I, I'm Are you with me on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. To work for it. I'm hesitant okay. because I have surgery coming. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to do it. But some of these will yeah. take place on the latter end, like the ones yeah. we're signing for tonight. Yeah. So which ones do we have for tonight? Are you filling that in as we speak, Sherry? It looks like. I do. Okay. <laughs> but I am open to correction. So the first one we had from tonight was SM2024-002. Yeah. We'd like to volunteer for that case. Uh, I do. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's uh, going to be a big one. And I'll go for that one. Two zero two four dash zero zero two. Okay. Oh, okay. Luna is there. I can. Take a location. Thank you, Victor. Yes. yes. Victor, I can do that one too. If if there are no, you need people on that. 
Yeah, let Chico do that one. Oh, and then we'll switch it next one. Very much. Oh, instead of Victor. Yes. I have three people, and I feel like I missed. I have Chico, Soledad, Milan. No, no, no. Milan, Luna, and Chico. Because Chico oh. replaced Victor, and then Soledad, or Luna okay. replaced Soledad. This one, like, See, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just looking at the spreadsheet, and I'm just missing. The next one is M12024 011. We need three volunteers for that case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> Wait, go to the front, you know. Lizzie, so what happened? Phil. Okay. The next case is M12024 013. Four people's hands. Yeah, that's going to flip forward. Back up. Okay. I have Abigail, Milan, Soledad. Did you want to go back to that? I mean, if this is there, <laughs> I can pick up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I do think that is a, you know, you know what? Yeah, I, I want to stay there. Yeah, actually, it works out. I want to. Yeah. Okay, you see. You got this one. Okay. So, Wait, for zero, one, are three. you saying? You're saying it's a good one? Yeah. I don't even know. know. I'm just yeah. to right now, they're just numbers to me. I don't. Yeah, that's the. Okay. So, the next case, M12024 at 014. I think we can add Jason or AB to these last two cases. Mm hmm. So we just need two volunteers for 014. Oh, we can put them both in. We just need one volunteer for 014. Oh, Luna. Right here? Thank you. And then AB and Jason will be on 014. Okay. I have Jason, AB, and Luna. Luna. Okay. And then the last one, M1204-015. Can you do that one? There are a lot of videos. What? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so uh, that, that is a, I'm surprised no one asked that question for some other people. Which one? Oh, the last five. Two, one, five. Let me look to see if signed up for it. Sometimes you can't ask us. Is it up to that one? I don't think we said up to that one. Oh, yeah, no, they voted. Oh, no. Yeah. Wait, which one is that? Oh, no. No. Did you? We said, oh, you know what? Maybe I have zero yes, um, eight no, and then Oops. all abstain. Okay. I flipped it around, and that's super important. Um, so yeah, then that's, that's oh, okay. then no one's doing this one at all. And that's the last one, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I gotta switch to the phone. Okay. I'll get back on. Um, Thank you, everyone. So this is the work I talked about when we talked about fair and bylaws, just knowing that we have things on our plate, um, and just being able to make a balance of meetings and times. And um, again, for the newer panel members, I'll meet before we dig into this again and just talk about how you navigate SharePoint, where you look at these videos, and um, so it's just won't be so overwhelmed. I was thinking that I've gotten more camera, like how to read some of the, the details at the top. And I just unlocked a new feature that in Chicago, the in-car cameras did not, were not run through Axon, um, but there's some cool features. Like you can see the seeds in the videos. But okay. I had no idea until someone just showed me. So I can show some tips and tricks in front of the camera. Okay. Keep moving. Okay, so I'm taking over. <gasps> <Where is it? laughs> then, uh, committee updates. 
So it feels weird, but I'm going to start <laughs> with the engagement. So uh, for the record, I just want to say that I haven't resigned to my chair, co-chair position yet. The reason for that is really... Um, uh, <laughs> okay, <laughs> nice. Um, and uh, the reason being that we have been working on the retreat, and I, uh, as soon as we're done with the retreat, uh, we can have the conversation, big picture, what we want to do with it, uh, like how we're going to move forward with the work of the community engagement committee. And then we have two people interested, but we maybe have more after the retreat. I don't know. So then uh, we will move to talk about that. So a um, couple of important things we have been in touch with the Central and staff. Uh, we're trying to set up um, meetings with them. Uh, we're already in the back and forth. So where did you post for um, I'm waiting for, um, we're waiting for an appointment so you can get back to us with dates. And um, we will be uh, engaging with them, of course, reporting back on that. Um, and then the next piece is the retreat that is coming up in uh, two of our, no, actually one of our two members have been working on it and Farah have been nominated <laughs> to facilitate the retreat. So if you want to share your plans and how we do it, that would be great. All right, thank you, Soledad. Um, so my understanding of the retreat um, and I want to take it a little bit back because when I think of retreat, I think of something that's very formal. Um, and this is really more of an opportunity for panel members to get to know one another, to talk about how you all want to work as a team um, and as a community panel together. And really um, um, just have an opportunity for some team building um, and so we are scheduled, I believe, for Sunday, April 21st, I believe, um, yep. 9 to 12. And um, essentially, we're going to start with opportunities for you guys to get to know each other one-on-one. -on -one. Um, we're going to come together as a group to talk about more specifically, um, what expectations do you want to set for yourself in terms of how you work with one another? Um, and then we'll close out with some bigger discussions in terms of how as a group do you want to build trust with one another um, and communicate with one another um, going forward in your work as a panel. So um, fundamentally, this will this will be casual, but there will be, you know, some substantive conversations that I will help facilitate. Um, but I think it's really more of an opportunity for you guys to really get to know each other and solidify your foundation um, as panel members individually and as panel members collectively. Great. Um, so we have a place. Thank you, Edgar. Yeah, thank you, Luna. Amazing work. So we're going to be meeting at at Wolf Law, it's in room 303, and I can send out well, we'll, we'll a map it. of the building. We'll um, see you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. See you. Wolf Law. Is that in Boulder? Yeah, see you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Boulder. No, actually, we're going to Fort Collins. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd yell if you want to send it to me or to Luna or Soledad, whatever. Um, we'll put together something with a little bit more details mm -hmm. um, to share with everyone. And city staff. Hmm? Yeah. City staff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, that's what I meant when I said everyone. <laughs> yeah, that, that, seriously, that's, that is everyone. Sometimes forget people. Um, you're hard to forget. <laughs> We're not forgetting it. Okay. Okay. So then we'll speak into the time. Uh, Legacy committee. Do we have any updates? Uh, not much. We we're still waiting on data from uh, DPD Daniel Reinhardt on juvenile interaction. So once we get that, we'll dig into the data and we'll have something to present 
possibly at the next uh, meeting. Okay. I do have, um, Daniel called me last late last week. Um, he said that there was some data situation that was just gonna take him a little bit more time, but he did expect to have that data this week. Mm -hmm. um, and he said that he can attend this upcoming uh, legacy meeting to be able to help people you know, answer questions about the data that, that he intends to have sent out okay. before that. Um, okay, amazing. So follow up from Q, uh, the first quarter meeting with the chief, uh, I wasn't there. So if anyone that was there wants to back me up here and we can talk about it, any thoughts? thoughts? Okay, of course, share your thoughts. thoughts. Uh, I, I, I think that uh, my main thought really is with during the first um, oh, yeah. during the first uh, meeting with uh, interim chief Redfern, we had asked afterwards in our debrief to keep the answers uh, of the chief down to five minutes, which was absolutely not the case this time. Um, to the point where Jason had to send a text to I just saw it because I was next to him to Victor saying, "Can we to keep the the uh, answers?" down to a reasonable um, time. Um, and so I really would like to insist that we do that mm -hmm. um, because in the end that was, we didn't get to ask, I, I didn't get to ask all the questions I had. Um, and uh, so that's my feedback for next time. <laughs> I'm gonna get you like a five minute hour, like go to a game store and get you like a five minute hourglass. And <laughs> you know, I mean, we can have a little bell and like when we're like 30 seconds down, we just ring it really gently and, and uh, um, that might be good or one way or another, um, it would be great. Which is kind of, I think some of the question, the answers or even the presentation, his introduction to New Palace was like 20 minutes. So it was, it was a bit long. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have another question. Um, maybe it's a Selena question. Um, it was on a Monday, first Monday, but officially it's supposed to be like the third or fourth Wednesdays with the meeting with the chief. So I think it's it might be like that was maybe with uh, the, the previous chief. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering. Is Monday a set day for this kind of meeting? Is it like the first Monday? Um, I think we put it for the fourth Monday of each quarter. And I think I based that on the poll that you guys filled out a couple months ago to kind of help me out. Um, but this one was the first Monday, wasn't it? Like, yeah, but that I think, oh, I think because spring break, I think, yeah, spring break I think got okay. Some sort of okay. Okay. schedule conflict that was going to happen. Um, but I think moving forward, it's going to be the fourth Monday of each quarter. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And that maybe we need to update our website. Yeah. With yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Naropa MOU. Do we have anything? Um, this is this was brought up several months ago. Um, previously, but it's now it's expired. There is in the in the SharePoint folder. There is the old Naropa MOU. I am just looking for movement from the panel of yes, we want to approach Naropa to see if they want to uh, basically re up that same memorandum of understanding. Um, and basically, I mean, it's in the SharePoint folder, but it's basically um, allows panel members to um, get like counseling um, if the material that we're working on and reviewing is um, something that they want to process uh, uh, because of the heaviness. Can I ask for more details? Who in the past provided those services and what? Or is it just a proposal that's out there? I mean, right now, what I ha what we have is the the one that was expired, mm -hmm. uh, and it would be to start the conversation with them again to see if they are interested in providing that type of of service to panel members. 
And that's been happening, or that's happened in the past, or it's okay. Oh, it, it was a, it was basically it was a contract that like yeah. Naropa would, you know, provide these services uh, for panel members or, or <laughs> on behalf of the city. Um, I my understanding is no one like availed themselves of those services, um, but at the same time, if we um, you know, we will be having a fatal police involved shooting with body worn camera. Code. So I'm I'm just wondering because I my question the first time this was brought about was um, my understanding is that there are students who of Naropa who are would be supporting us, and I feel that that's not sufficient. Mm -hmm. I I'm sure that the teachings at Naropa are great, but I think that they're too much of a beginner to handle the kind of thing that we're going to need. And since Noria earlier was talking about budget, I'm wondering like if we could have a budget where we have actual experienced um, um, uh, therapist, uh, you know, with a upper limit uh, where we could have actual therapists that maybe we choose or we choose from the list that are professional who are who know how to deal with this kind of things. So I would, I would recommend that we look um, at this type of services rather than students who really are probably not experienced enough to handle the things that we're handling. That, I, I agree totally. Plus, I'm curious. Because I don't really remember. How did we come up with Naropa? Is that source? Do you know? I do not know. <laughs> I wasn't here. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I think because they provide the community, um, I don't know, free counseling uh, for the community. So it was got to give, give the panel certain deference when accessing those services, maybe quicker. Um, I don't know if maybe it was stick with Naropa, but in a new approach, we try to get like one specific maybe person that might be more experienced because mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah. Like um, they have like trauma, I don't know, yeah. to kind of traumatize a young yeah. person. Yeah. <laughs> well, not sharing the video with them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, I, so I like I, that I idea of the list, uh, of having yeah. a list uh, where we can choose, you know. Um, yeah, and, and maybe that would be a budget item, yeah. But we can connect with one of what we talk about as we develop our budget. Mm -hmm. Most municipalities have internal people who do that, that employees can access. It's completely confidential and it's very qualified people, so we should. Check that first before we start really announcing them because if they have those resources already here, like EAP type of yeah, thing? EAP, yeah. Yeah. Right. And most organizations have an EAP where they have somebody who's completely confidential and they don't. Mm -hmm. And I think that would be um, a great place to do that rather than outside somewhere. Isn't that for uh, Bill? Isn't that mostly for employees? You know, but like the employee assistance program yeah, but, by that. Uh, as a as a resource, we're not employees with that with that. Could that include, like I said, could include us, but yeah. I mean, I think it's something it to look at because they already have a budget for it, and we don't have to spend our money on something we already being very qualified people. It's completely confidential, and I mean, Naria said, take care of yourself. So we could just tap into that and have a, have a so maybe that's something you could. Uh, can we we did, just, just so it stays on the record. Like there's, this is in no way undermining the services that Naropa provides for the community or right. their expertise. Right. I guess it's mm -hmm. just a concern that we might need, or the any panel accessing these type of services might need a, a higher level of expertise. Mm -hmm. um, just saying that to, I mean. Not right. to undermine Naropa in any way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I want to affirm. I think you all are hearing it. If we're getting grad students, I don't think that they're equipped to handle yeah. what we would be going to them for. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we can take perspective it's there. Can it be okay. added to our list of uh, yeah. things that covered during the retreat? I don't know that we have. I'm going to, yeah, I'm taking note of that. Okay. okay. Can I make a suggestion? Yes. Um. So this, this MOU doesn't have to be set for 20 years. And right now, we don't have any other supports outside of crying into a pillow. So if you set this up for six months, then maybe in six months we have something else figured out. So maybe we can just agree to this temporarily so we have at least someone to talk to. And then other things can open up in six months or, or down the road. But right yes. now, we don't have any supports for things that we're dealing with at all outside of our own personal resource network. I, actually, Victor, I have a question for you. Um, have you used those services or Chico in the past, or do you know of anybody who's used those services and what were their feedback? Yeah, I already have a personal therapist, so I use my EAP program, but for people who don't have the privilege of the EAP program, it's literally someone else to talk to it about it. And I work in mental health and recovery, and so we don't want to unload this on our spouses or our neighbors. So at the very least, we have a temporary outlet for six months, and then we can modify it down the road so we can accept the temporary MOU. And therapy services are therapy services, so they'll depend on the quality of the engagement and the person that you're dealing with. But at the bare minimum, we need something where we don't have anything right now. And that's all I got. I concur with what Victor is saying. I think that the, the idea with setting up the MOU and Naropa coming in was to have something and not have nothing. Um, most of us, like Victor is saying, I too have other resources. So I, I'm okay using other resources. But for those that don't have those resources, Naropa is an alternative. And we can have a conversation with them to say, hey, we need this type of service for mm. you to provide this type of service. So we can engage them and discuss. Mm. Is, is, it, is it possible? Is it possible that we could, because uh, I don't want to make that, no one has used Nerva since we've had it, right? Mm -hmm. So um, if it's okay, I would like us to, one with everybody present, be able to kind of further discuss it and explore options uh, during the retreat. We're only well, a week and a half out. Yeah. Before, yeah, it's been uh, you know, added to the agenda. Let's um, I explore it. We will have time, actually. Yeah, it's already pretty long, but. If we bring our, right, well, mm -hmm. you know, bring our thoughts ready, ready to just explore with some, 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 you know, some finalized, kind of finalized suggestions or recommendations, then we can vote at the retreat for where we want to proceed. Well, we oh, can vote at the retreat. The retreat is not. Oh, so now we want yeah. to the We can't even yeah. talk about business at the retreat. Yeah. It's not yes. public meeting. Bad, bad. Okay. So we can't do any of that legally at the retreat. So I just want to say I'm I'm one of those persons who is who cannot afford a personal therapist, and I'm not gonna go to Naropa. So I don't know. I mean, I don't want to talk for everybody. I'm gonna talk for myself. Um, I really cannot afford a therapist, and I'd rather put, cry in my pillow than having someone who's not. Um, who cannot handle me. <laughs> I'll, I'll just say it that way. And I'm just um, going to say, in all fairness, we're making an assumption right. that the people at Naropa aren't skilled or qualified to do this. And I They're think students. It doesn't matter. I've, I've worked with some very astute students, so the student isn't the factor. And so I think that we have to be careful just not to make assumptions because they're students that they don't have the skills to handle this. So well, I think we also don't have enough information about like who the clinicians are and what the MOU says right. and what that agreement is. Yeah. That, that's why I said, I, I, I think we are belaboring the point here is. Yeah. The point is we, we engage with NAROP and find out who the clinicians <laughs> are. That's and if they, if they tell us it's graduate students, we tell us, sorry, this yeah. is not what we need. 
That's right. I thought that was a given. Services are provided by second and third year graduate students in counseling, psychology, or social work under the close supervision of licensed professionals. I don't want to be a case study. I'm sorry. I, that's my opinion, and I'll, I'll rest here. I, I don't need to argue with anybody. If, if the majority, as it seems, want to do that, then you go ahead. Absolutely. And it's, do you have a date on that? Did you have a date that that was done? Is that was that with the old panel, with the original panel? Here's I don't remember, and I'm asking you because I don't remember mm -hmm. hearing anything about it. I've been on this since May 30th of 2019 when it started, and I've not heard this. It is. So yeah. do you have a date? I think it was a little bit when we old. started. Yeah. yeah, it would have had to. Um, have I mean, it was signed by Joey Lapari. It was signed. Um, July 26, 2022 through June of 2020. Okay, so that was that last mm -hmm. panel. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So maybe we could put this on as an agenda item at our next meeting. Yeah. yeah. So let's, let's put it as an agenda item and as an action item for the month so we can yeah. reach out and ask and yeah. so Give we can prepare to the discussion. I think with what we don't need is to keep talking about it, but also I'm 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 hearing clearly that there are people in the panel who have access to their own therapist, mm -hmm. which is great. And others that don't have access to those resources and that have a preference. So I think we need to find that find out a way that we can make everyone feel mm -hmm. contained that in 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 a way that is meaningful for them. So um so before we move to the IPM report, um, can I, yeah, go ahead. I'm just wondering if it's gonna be the exact same thing I was gonna say. Uh, probably, <laughs> we haven't voted for our minutes. So uh, if we can if we can look at, um, if everyone have the chance to look at our meeting minutes. Okay, so can I have a motion to accept February's meeting first and then we'll do March. So, Motion to for February. Why was it here in February? So, so move. Second. Okay. Second. Okay. So can we have a vote? All in favor? Oh, oh yes. Was I there? Yeah, I was there. Yeah, yeah. You, you know. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Yeah, I was here. <laughs> it's okay. it's online, but okay. Uh, and then what was the what was there for? The, I think for everyone that was there. I think it was just three, four. Victor, so and Chica. Yeah, and Chica was it? Right. Thank you, Lizzie. Six was it six? Yeah. Okay, amazing. Then March. March. Can we entertain a motion? No? Second. No? Madam. All in favor? I vote yes. Come here. I'm going. <laughs> Come here. Uh, okay. Okay. You know, no, it's wrong. Okay. All you Sherry. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> We are not as off track as I thought we were. If you can wrap it up in three minutes, you know. Yeah. <laughs> girl. Well, we started five minutes late. <laughs> and we ate. So, so we had. Oh, Selena wants to go. Hold on. Is anyone else in the meeting? Yeah. We are. Oh, hold on. We have them on my end. All right, so mm -hmm. let, let me just. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is the April uh, 2024 Boulder Police Oversight Panel Meeting, the Independent Police Monitors Report. And the. Um, Full case file we reviewed that were reviewed in March is zero. Full case files reviewed and completed and pending BPD disposition is zero. And we have nine cases awaiting panel review, uh, except for the other ones we voted for today. 
Um, we have uh, completed cases since uh, March of 2024. We have MI2023011. Um, the allegation against Officer One was uh, a Rule One compliance with values, rules, and general orders. That was General Order 203, investigative responsibility and case assignments. Um, did not conduct an adequate investigation. Uh, the panel recommended uh, uh, a one, they sustained the allegation and recommended a one year letter of reprimand. And the department determined um, that they would also sustain and give a one year letter of recommend, reprimand. I would also like to note that um, in this case, the chief went with the panel's recommendations over some of the chain of command recommendations. Um, additionally, the uh, uh, the panel recommended that Officer One receive additional training on maintaining a neutral, open mind and demeanor during investigations to uphold the integrity and customer service values of the Boulder Police Department. And the chief wrote, these deficiencies have already been discussed at length with Officer One and also that he has taken full responsibility for his action and has been working diligently to do better. Um, the panel also made a broader recommendation, which is when the department receives complaints of misconduct while a criminal investigation is ongoing, that supervisors identify a strategy for completing the investigation, including determining the accused officer's further communication with the complainant and or whether the case should be reassigned within the department. And the chief in the department responded that this will be assessed on a case-by-case -case basis and there are clearly some circumstances in which an officer or detective against whom an allegation has been made should be completely removed from an ongoing criminal investigation involving the complainant. And this would usually apply if the allegations were one of serious misconduct. In other circumstances, an officer or detective might still be utilized to conduct follow up, but a different officer selected to communicate with the complainant if that is a friction point. Mm -hmm. um, for MI2024 006, um, the uh, allegation against officers one and two were rule, was a rule four, respect for other, um, harassed the woman. Um, I recommended that the case be, un, or that the allegation be unfounded according to general order one to 120 dash one section eight. And the department um, agreed with those determinations. And in MI2024007, it was uh, Officer One had the allegation of Rule Four, respect for others, um, harassed the complainant witness by pulling over her vehicle and issuing a speeding ticket. I recommend the independent police monitor recommended that the allegation be unfounded in accordance with General Order 120 1, Section 8, and the department agreed with that determination. Um, I had also recommended that there was, um, I, it was outside of the Boulder Police Department's purview, but that the signage on that stretch of road, I was somewhat confusing. To, um, and I just found out today that the uh, Boulder Police Department member who I made that recommendation to dealt with multiple different agencies, and he reported that there is a new sign on the, the on-ramp to make it more clear for motorists. Okay, some of our statistics from March. Number of complaints that the Independent Police Monitor classified was 13. Eight of those were misconduct investigations. One was a serious misconduct investigation. Um, two were classified as community inquiries. Two were classified as community feedback. Zero were, were referred to the conflict facilitation process. Um, I attend observe six interviews. Zero responses to critical incidents. I deemed three investigations thorough and complete, and the Boulder Police Department closed three investigations. Um, so the open docket, as of April 1st, the, the docket was 21. Um, all of those cases were classified, and I had zero cases that awaited my classification. As I said earlier, by tomorrow morning, it will be eight. <laughs> that are waiting for my review. Um, the 
I'm giving more details about the 2023 cases because those are our oldest cases. Um, um, so the um, MI 2023-18, um, I deemed that they're all incomplete in February. It's pending the chief's final determination. Um, MI 2023-028, um, I deemed they're incomplete in March. That case is also pending the chief's final determination. Um, MI 2023-033, that officer was on extended leave. He returned and we have an interview scheduled for next week. Um, MI 2023-034, um, I deemed that throw incomplete in March and um, that's pending the chief's final determination. And MI 2023-035, I had returned that to the uh, Boulder Police Department for additional investigative steps. I just learned today that um, that final step that I've been asking for has been completed. So I should be getting that back. Um, regarding the um, the fatal officer involved shooting that that occurred, um, I was told last week that the police department um, expects to be scheduling their their force review panel this week. So scheduling it this week, giving everyone the file access to the file and probably a three weeks opportunity to review all of the, the footage. Um, so maybe by the end of April or early May that will have taken place. Um, Regarding my uh, community engagement for the month of March, I attended uh, events hosted by the Boulder Chamber of Commerce um, and also an event at the University of Colorado Center for Race, Media and Technology. And I am continuing collaboration with the Center for People with Disabilities on an event. And also in the month of March, the Boulder Police Department conducted um, both um, classroom training, some high-risk traffic stops that I attended. And then they also did like field training up at the fire training center. Um, and I attended uh, two of those trainings to, see, I wanted to see it in uh, the darkness. So I went up at nine o'clock at night one day and then at six o'clock in the morning to see how that felt with different light conditions. So, thank you. Um, so to keep us moving, uh, is there any additional items that we haven't discussed that anyone wants to bring to the panel? Oh, all right. I would also like to say that, um, last week, um, the governor signed the, um, law banning uh, law enforcement agencies and the coroners from using the term excited delirium in their reports. Yep. 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 Okay. Uh, do we have any members of the public? No, no. right? Okay. So seeing none, uh, I think we're ready to wrap it up. Thank you, everyone. Um, as usual. Have fun. I'll see you in two weeks at the retreat. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.